Good afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Mahalia Joseph, and the scene news is live at noon. And I'm Nasir Mohammed with Sport. Topping the news at this time, less than 24 hours after Melissa Ramkisun was pronounced dead at the Shugonas police station on Tuesday night, a man suspected of killing her surrendered to police. The suspect surrendered at the Freeport police station on Wednesday evening in the presence of his attorney. 33-year-old Ramkisun was fatally shot on Tuesday night by someone she knew. The wounded woman was then driven to the Shugonas police station where she was pronounced dead. A revolver was found in the car. The suspect gave police his version of the events, which led to Ramkisun's death, which at certain points conflict with the initial report given to police at the Shugonas station. He continues to be questioned by police in relation to the incident. An attorney is expected to appear before a Port of Spain court today to answer fraud charges. 76-year-old Wilston Campbell was charged on Wednesday by the fraud squad after advice was received from DPP Roger Gaspard. He was arrested on Tuesday. The San Fernando-based attorney is accused of fraudulent conversion of a client's funds, a sum of $132,153 which was linked to a land transaction. Earlier this week, the TTPS had warned the public that there had been several reports of real estate scams across the country. Police have sought the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard's help in retrieving a body which was spotted on Paragrant Bay on Wednesday. Officers of the Western Division received a report from fishermen about the body being seen along the remote northwest on beach at around noon yesterday, but were unable to get the body by land. Officers were unable to get to the beach before the sun set on Wednesday. This morning, the TTPS approached the Coast Guard for their assistance on Thursday morning. The Tobago House of Assembly's Chief Secretary, Kelvin Charles, could not give a timeline as to when arrears owed to workers of the Tobago Regional Health Authority would be paid. He said, however, that the Finance Division of the Assembly is in close contact with the Finance Ministry on the matter. And that the request for the appropriate releases um, will be made shortly so that we would be able to be in a position to discharge our responsibility to the IRHJ workers in Tobago. He said the necessary paperwork must be done by the Division of Finance for funds to be dispersed to the THA in order for the arrears to be paid. The Honorable Prime Minister some time ago would have indicated that um, payment um, would have been made available by the end of March. All right? But we in Tobago have to do the necessary paperwork to ensure that the releases are made which would then allow us to make the payments that are due and owing. Following a stakeholder meeting led by Transport Minister Rohan Sinanan and a THA Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles in Tobago on Wednesday, Minister Sinanan confirmed that the charter responsible for the superfast Galassia served a notice to the Port Authority of Trinidad and Tobago that they'll be withdrawing the cargo vessel on April 18, 2017. This will leave the country without a cargo vessel to transport goods to Tobago. Medium to long term, I think we are very comfortable where we are. It's a short interim is where the, the, the concerns are. And we have heard from the Tobago stakeholders about their concerns about using a barge going forward. The Chamber of Industry and Commerce Tobago Division has rejected the option of using a barge as a short-term fix to the problem. A few other options were laid out on the table according to the Acting General Manager of the Port Authority Board of Trinidad and Tobago, Charmaine Lewis. Engaging the Coast Guard um, because they have two vessels that we feel would be able to support the cargo service to Tobago. We are also looking at scheduling while we understand the TNT spirit is primarily for passengers we're also exploring the option of of doing schedules so that the TNT spirit can do two trips at least four times per week to try to pick up some of the, the slack 
She said they were also looking to engage TCL where the transportation of cement is concerned, but that too is a barge option. The Chamber has since rejected these options. Instead, this is what they've proposed. Two suggestions from Intercontinental that a negotiation goes back to the table where Intercontinental is re-engaged and whether it's possible to salvage what we have on the table now, which is the superfast Galicia. And if not, Intercontinental has made a proposal which is a vessel that they may be able to source and supply us in light of maybe the possibility that the owners may have already committed in black and white the superfast and that that vessel be put on the table to cabinet as an option that can come to us shortly. This is the C News live report at noon. Remember you can keep up to date with all the latest news on our website at ctvtt.com or you can check out our Facebook and Twitter pages at C News Live. President of the American Chamber of Commerce, Ravi Suradavara, says the government must look at ways to maximize productivity in this economic climate. The AmCham head said recent announcements of further government borrowing could be beneficial if the money is used properly. However, he says over the past two decades, the country does not have an, have an excellent return of investment. We should not be in a more indebted, less competitive position as we are presently now. After consuming 900 billion plus dollars since 2000 to now as an economy. He says there have been many hindrances to this, such as subsidies and employment inefficiencies. And he also notes that the government has been slow to adapt to consumer trends. And what complicates that matter is employment. Factor productivity, uh, be it in, uh, increases in efficiency, uh, be it in market efficiency of operations for goods. All of these elements redound to our competitiveness. There's um, consumer habits in Trinidad and Tobago driving a lot of behavior of private companies. And I think the government, and I've said this time and time again, should pay heed to that because consumers are pushing more digital. Director of the Center for Human Development, Hanif Benjamin, has stressed that more focus should be placed on the physical effects of trauma. Speaking on Good Morning Trinidad and Tobago this morning, he says while trauma is largely seen as a mental issue, it often leads to physical problems such as lifestyle diseases. Time. Once it is not treated, you develop a sense of, uh, 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 of physical uh, illnesses and, and Today we are seeing where the Minister of Health is talking about the high number of, of, of type of diseases that we have in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and that goes along with throughout the world. So definitely, DK, there is a correlation between tra trauma untreated in children and adolescents, cumulative over time, leading to serious, serious, serious um, diseases and, and health concerns. Additionally, Mr. Benjamin said adults must learn to manage their stress and prevent it passing on to their children, as a recent study has shown that children who are stressed and experience some form of trauma early in their life are more susceptible to physical illnesses. To some other news now, while Jamaica and Barbados may have lifted bans on corned beef imported from Brazil, restrictions remain in Trinidad and Tobago. In a release on Wednesday, the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries confirmed that the temporary restriction on imports and retail sales of all meat products from Brazil remains in place pending the outcome of ongoing talks with the Brazilian government about its food safety standards. The ministry says it will make a decision to lift the ban once it is fully satisfied that the affected products, corned beef, chicken patties and chicken nuggets pose no risk to local consumers. Agriculture Minister Clarence Rambrat has sought assurances from the Brazilian authorities via Dr. Amy Brown, Trinidad and Tobago's ambassador in Brazil, about the safety of items. Here's Ian Wallace with your afternoon weather. Saharan dust is common at this time of the year, running from April into August, so several more months of Saharan dust are likely. 
but this recent dust episode will likely clear Friday and it will feel hot at times 32 degrees Celsius in Tobago, 34 degrees Celsius in Trinidad. For those of you heading offshore, look for easterly winds of 15 knots bringing some white caps with still northerly swells long at 13 seconds affecting east and northern coastlines with waves of 2 meters with a bit of a breeze especially along those Atlantic shores. Tide is high at 1 p.m. then low at 7.30 p.m. That's the latest weather and I am meteorologist Dean Wallace. Former Energy Minister and MP for Labre, Nicole Oliver, says a decision by BP to opt out of building its Angelin platform in Trinidad and Tobago can negatively affect this country. Her comments come in response to statements by Minister Stuart Young at a press conference on Tuesday suggesting the company was considering moving the project out of this country in an interest of time. Janine Brown has more. The Labre MP says it would be unfortunate if the Angelin platform is not built in this country. The construction of the U.S. $2 billion platform was originally awarded to Trinidad offshore fabricators with a timeline dated December 2016. Responding via text message to questions from CNews, Ms. Oliver said Tofco has the experience and the expertise to successfully construct offshore platforms with the recently launched Juniper platform being the most recent example. She went on to say, Angelin is a smaller platform weighing in at 1,800 tons deck and jacket compared to Juniper which weighed 5,100 tons deck only. Competency, she says, is therefore not an issue. Ms. Oliver noted that platform fabrication represents a major cost component in offshore oil and gas exploration and retaining this expenditure in-country will translate to a significant contribution to local content. The Libre MP said when one considers that these expenses are recovered by the company prior to payment of taxes, then you get a better understanding of the magnitude of loss to the local economy when the bulk of the capital expenditure is allowed to leave the shores. Janine Brown, C News. The intellectual property industry in Trinidad and Tobago has made over 18 million in gross revenue in recent years. Speaking at a national workshop hosted by the Trinidad and Tobago Music Company Limited and coordinated by the World Intellectual Property Organization, Ingrid Citoran, Permanent Secretary, Ministry in, of the Attorney General and Legal Affairs, highlighted this. Of revenue. Having earned $18.7 million in gross revenue between the years 1995 and 2005 and $48.8 million in between the years 2006 and 2015. The Intellectual Property Office has the task of promoting inventiveness in the society. And now it's time to turn you over to Nasir Mohammed, who is going to tell you what's happening in the world of sport. Well, I'm seeing you not wearing any national colors. So what's happening? That's correct. No cricket right now. <laughs> or football, I should say. But we have the names of 13 men who have been selected to represent Trinidad and Tobago in round 9 of the regional 4-day tournament. <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board has announced the names of 13 players selected on the Red Force National Squad to play in round 9 of the PCL Regional 40 tournament against Barbados. Marlon Richards was named captain as Kyle Hope, who captained the team in the last two rounds, has been selected by the WICB to the President's 11 team to play against the touring Pakistanis and will miss the next two rounds of the PCL 40 tournament. Ewart Nicholson has been selected in his place. The match will be played from April 7th to 10th at Kensington Oval in Barbados. And in more cricket news, Pakistan Test captain Ms. Baul Haq has announced that the tour of the West Indies will be his last. The 42-year-old middle-order batsman made the, announce, the announcement that he has decided to bow out of international cricket during a press conference in Lahore on Thursday. Ul Haq retired from one-day internationals and international T20 cricket back in 2015. He said, quote, it will be my last series and I have conveyed this to the chairman of the Pakistan Cricket Board quite some time ago. End quote. I will try to finish it on a high note, he also said. He was appointed Pakistan's test captain in October 2010 and went on to become the side's most successful captain with 24 wins in 53 matches, leading them to number one in the test rankings last August. However, recent results have not been kind, with Pakistan losing six straight test matches. Misler says, however, 
This did not influence his decision. The first ever practice match at the state of the art Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Taruba took place on Tuesday night. The T20 match between Monroe Road and Cosmos was the first in a series of matches organized to see how the field and pitch react to match play conditions. It's all part of the due diligence being undertaken in preparation for the official opening of the long overdue facility. Monroe Road won the toss and elected to bowl first, and Cosmos found the going tough and could only muster 85 all out on a slow surface. Monroe Road also struggled on the surface and almost gave it away, but held on to win a thriller by one wicket, reaching 87 for 9 in 18.5 overs. And onto some news of hockey now, there was once a hit television series called Eight is Enough. Apparently, the Canadian women's hockey team never heard of it as they hammered the TNT ladies in Pool A encounter at the FIH World League women's second round encounter in Vancouver. Already demoralized following heavy defeats to Chile 9-1 and Mexico 6-0, the ladies were not expected to fare much better against the host nation. So said, so done as the Canadians, who are anxious for a win after losing a heartbreaker to Chile 1-0 in their last outing, took out their frustrations on the TNT ladies with a 12-0 blow blowout. TNT fell 7-0 behind at the half and then conceded a further 5 unanswered in the second half for the 12-0 final score, making it a staggering 27 goals conceded in only 3 games, with just 1 goal scored. Rachel Donahoe led Canada with 3 while there were two each from Brian Stairs and Jordan Fizak. TNT will next see action on Saturday in the 5th to 7th playoff. And that's it for sport for today. And that's how we end the C News Report at noon. I'm Mahalia Joseph. And I'm Nasira Mohammed. Remember, for up to date and breaking news throughout the day, you can visn the C News website at ctvtt.com. Have a good afternoon.